Hello everyone, uh, long time, um, I'm still uh, uh, busy, very busy with work and traveling and all this kind of stuff, so I, I had very little time to uh, focus on uh, putting together back the, the 3D printer, uh, but at the same time I'm investigating new uh, technologies and new um, boards for the 3D printer. So today I want I wanted to do an unboxing of the uh, P3Tech uh, Manta. Um, I got this board um, a week ago. Took took a month to get here. And in particular, this is the P3Tech uh, Manta M8P. So let's do the unboxing. I already opened it because I was very curious about this uh, board. And um, let's see. Here there are some just pins and uh, uh, plugs and this kind of stuff. Um, so I kind of have a, a precarious uh, uh, Station here. I'm holding the camera with one hand, and I have my tripod with me. Uh, let's see if I able to do. Okay, yeah, I'm getting there. So why I got this new board? Um, so until now I used uh, the modeling firmware on my 3D printers, and the issue with that, while you are developing a new 3D printer, and you need to do a lots of testing and you know, repeated testing and recompiling all that stuff, it takes a lot, a lot of time. Also, you need to uh, stay um, updated for every single changes that uh, Marlin has. Um, and so it became very difficult to stay up to date and, and the time uh, to recompile and reinstall the firmware on the boards. So this new board has the option to install both Marlin and Kepler. And Kepler uh, is very interesting because you can refresh the firmware or just re-update uh, up a new config on a web interface, uh, depending on which uh, web interface you have. In you know, uh, you can install different ones there. But it's very simple. While you are developing the, the 3D printer and you need to change a few parameters, you don't have to recompile the firmware, but you just need to change the config file and refresh and you get the changes. So perfect. Um, and also I wanted to investigate Kip Kipler um, for this new uh, 3D printer that I'm building. So basically here there are some you know, uh, plugs for motors and, and thermistors and all that stuff, so you can build your own. You see, there are the pins here, so not very interesting. So, let me move this apart. I paid this board uh, $60, including shipping, so I'll put the links in the description so you can check it out. Of course, this the dock. I'm not sure why they're shipping this stuff. I never use it. I throw it away. I think it's a waste of plastic. So please don't put it anymore. Especially for those who buy uh, different boards from the same manufacturer. As as uh, I think it's a waste. Okay. So just a note from Bitrack. Uh, thank you for purchasing product. Nothing interesting here. And this is the board. Let me take it out. Mm. Okay. One hand. And let me get this. And the board is here. So. Let me put it on angle so it's easier. So the board is pretty big. Uh, not huge, but pretty big has eight motors um, and the particular thing is that with Kipler 
you need to install it on a, usually they install it on a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi here are almost impossible to find and when you find it are crazy expensive. So I use the Raspberry Pi for my um, e-bike project where the Raspberry Pi will manage the entire bike and will talk to a mobile app and to the internet of course and I paid for the development board so the one that has uh, ethernet and USBs and stuff I paid I think it was the 8 gigabyte I paid 70 dollar now the same board is more than 200 bucks which is crazy it doesn't make any sense uh, you find the boards um, but that price is it's just nonsense so this board instead of having a separate uh, Raspberry Pi or the um, uh, the module uh, for you know the small board from uh, Raspberry Pi has here the module that you can install and basically it's a Raspberry Pi it's not has uh, um, I hand has the Raspberry Pi but uh, it makes you know it, it makes sense it's cheaper um, I think the board is around $24 or something like that depending on where you buy it uh, and it's uh, comp compact, it's called the CB1 uh, has uh, I think 500 uh, uh, megabyte of memory uh, has a 64 bit chip has Wi-Fi uh, the Wi-Fi is only 100 megabits probably that's how they keep the price low so when you connect it to this uh, it will talk to the to the board um, and you have basically a computer because that that Raspberry Pi, let's call it CB1, has uh, a Debian Linux operating system. Basically, you have a computer on this board. Um, so let's let's just showcase what this board has. Power supplies on here for uh, the motors, 12 and 24 volts, which are selectable here with with uh, pins. Uh, power and the bed power and the bed output of course uh, if you remember my videos I will use MOSFETs external MOSFETs to to, um, to to separate the high power high current from the board so if anything happens I fry the MOSFETs and not the board thermistors here there are one two three four um, on top of here there are fans and the fans are the cool part they can work on 5, 12 or 24 volts and uh, select all by pins uh, here fans and fans um, up here there is a thermistor PT100 or 1000 and you need to sele select them now uh, I'm not sure uh, I read somewhere where the PT1000 doesn't work. I'm not sure yet. I have to investigate that still. Thermistors here for the hot hands. Um, the probes here. Um, there is a um, RGB. There are two connections for RGB. I don't use it, so I don't care. Uh, these are the uh, external interfaces for expansion for uh, video for a screen. Of course, you GPIO pin for the uh, Raspberry Pi CB1 interface, Ethernet, which is 100 megabit. Uh, there are uh, two uh, USB two. Uh, okay, let's try again. Battery died, of course. So two USB two. Um, actually, let me let me check. No. Yeah. Um, so. Up here, there are the jumpers to uh, select 12 or 24 volts for the motors. Here, there are the jumpers for um, the dry the interface that you want to use for the driver, UART, SPI, etc. 
uh, down here you can't see much here but uh, the uh, sensorless uh, homing uh, jumpers uh, in the manual there is all the description how to use these jumpers so there are so many that uh, it's better to go through the manual and check the, uh, them out uh, what else uh, I already said the, the M stops here um, USB C so you can power the board with the USB and C but you need to select uh, some jumpers here too manual again check it out to uh, HDMI I said it let's turn around this board and on the back if you first of all let me say this really cool the back they labeled everything so they did a really good job and up here there is the to insert the um, the micro uh, micro SD card for this is for the CB1 uh, module for so Linux goes here and here there is for the film, firmware um, if you want to use the SD card for the board and uh, basically that's it for now so I'm going to receive the CB1 module soon probably by the time I post this video and uh, I will do a video on that too and there is a, 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 a and uh, actually I bought the uh, the board so that you can install the CB1 on it it's an adapter uh, and I'll show you that too and basically that's it so if you have any questions uh, please leave a comment um, I will leave in the discussion uh, in the description of this video where about the, the board and um, a link to the manual and to the operating system the OS image that you can uh, burn in uh, on the on the memory card uh, to make everything work so the keep uh, it's basically the OS in Linux with the uh, Kepler installation the manual has all the details uh, how to manage the board and how to uh, install the software so there are other videos online so uh, there are plenty of um, information so uh, thank you very much for uh, for watching the video please put a like subscribe to the channel and I will have uh, more videos in the coming days probably and I'll see you on next video bye bye thank you